Dear everyone. My dearest Eddie, thank you for the letter. dearest son, thank you for the letter. Have anyone else as a daughter? Love, Dad. He was called up uh, from the reserves to go to Iraq, and then he actually left on June 15th, which was Father's Day, um, for Iraq. So it's going to be a hard, a hard Father's Day um, this time for us. I picked out uh, two letters. My dearest Eddie, thank you for the letters. You know that I always want to hear from you whenever you can spare the time to drop your daddy a note. I know that things are busy for you, especially now that you are back in school and things are starting to move towards a big change for you. Mike wrote a lot of letters, of lots of pages. Lots of people wanted to hear what he had to say. My dearest son, thank you for the letter. I like getting letters. It is very hard for dad to get email. <coughs> so letters are the best way I can hear from you and your brothers and sister. My grandmother had said, oh my gosh, she said the letters I read, she said, it just broke my heart because I just felt like I was right there with him. And, and the people he described, we felt as if we all knew them. And he painted a very good picture. Now, Daddy is wearing all his combat junk. I look like a stormtrooper from Star Wars. Pretty scary. But this little boy walked up to me and held out his arms for a hug. So I squatted down and gave him a hug. It was the coolest thing. The kids seem to like us. Some of their parents do as well. They smile and wave and so on. Some don't like us. They give us nasty looks and don't speak at all. Those are the ones we worry about. He didn't sugarcoat anything. I mean, we got, you know, the real deal through his letters, and I think that's what was so appealing to a lot of people about his letters because, oh my gosh, this is first-hand stuff. We're really getting to hear what really happened and what went on. And I'm not trying to scare you. I just want you to understand how I live and what's going on here. Nothing big that would make the news like in Baghdad, but a little thing every day. We have been shot at with mortars three times in the last seven days, and two days ago a Marine truck was destroyed by an IED not too far from here. I saw it from and the he room. said, it's, it's my dream, it's what I wanted to do, and, and um, drive tanks. That was what he only wanted to do since he was about, since he was a little. So I think, though, he was hesitant about this time, and the only reason I think he was hesitant is because of his children, because of the four kids. I hope that you enjoyed Christmas very much. I know that you were good, and I hope that you got lots and lots of presents. We didn't do much Christmas here. It was very hard. We all missed our families very much, and we were sad. Major Michael Mundell loading his first magazine of live ammunition. Hopefully, that same magazine will unload those same rounds a year from now back here in Kuwait. Mike died as a result of an IED, an improvised explosive device, roadside bomb, whatever you want to call it. There were two Iraqi army trucks in front of, in the very front. Those were the first two trucks. And those two trucks drove over the bomb, and then when the first U.S. truck drove over it, um, the trigger man pulled the trigger. And um, Mike was in that truck. That was the hardest for me to hear because I, I couldn't imagine someone did that on purpose. And um, you just don't understand why would they take someone's dad away. I miss you too very much and it often makes me angry that I'm missing this most very important year of your life. You're about to take a big step from little girl to womanhood. I'm afraid that not having experienced it as a female, I don't have much to offer in the way of advice. Your mother is the go-to person on this one. Just be aware of the oh, Yeah, he's a hero. Um, 
We've heard those three words many, many times since he died, but as far as we were concerned, he was that before then. Of course, they'd rather have their hero back, but, you know. I don't want you or your friends to think that I'm tucked away in a safe little office like some coward. We are involved in the fighting of this war every day. It is my job to do this and to take care of my men and myself. I want you to understand something very clearly. You will never, ever, never be a disappointment to me or your mom. Never. What you decide to do, what you want to be very much, decision. and I'm so very, very proud of you. I wouldn't have anyone else as a daughter. Love, Dad. My youngest, Dale, got a letter from him. He was killed on Friday, January 5th. He got a letter on January 8th, the following Monday. He had written him a letter from school that I didn't know he had written. And so apparently Mike had answered him back. It was bittersweet, I guess, because he had wanted some last words from his dad and he had prayed for that. And I think that was the answer to his prayer, even though it was very difficult. But I think in years to come, that'll be something he'll cherish forever. Um, he'll, he'll always, always keep that. So letters are the best way I can hear from you and your brothers and sister. It is always so nice to get one. When I got it, I took off my helmet and sat on the hood of my Humvee and read it. I also shared it with my guys. Getting, letter, getting a letter from home was always special. I miss you very much and can't wait to see you when I come home.